Well, hello, I'm Mike Festivo. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be covering three different flux welding machines. If you're just starting out, you're interested in welding, but don't want to break the bank on your first welder, these welders are actually in the $200 range, give or take, but they all have different options. So in this video, we're going to be going over the different options of each welder. So you might be able to make a better decision of something you might want, or you might be like me and have a bigger welder in your shop, but just don't feel like packing it around for field repairs in the back of your truck. These are all in the 20 some pound range of very light inverter machines and you do not need a gas bottle so stick around i think you'll enjoy the video so i do want to mention towards the end of the video we're going to be running each one of these welders on the same exact flux wire so you can see firsthand how they all work i'm going to start off with the titanium 125 and the reason is uh this is the first welder i bought out of this group of welders and this whole video is self-sponsored i paid out of pocket for all three so i just want to let you guys know that for the record the titanium 125 120 volts so you can plug it into only house socket it's very portable it's an inverter machine like all the other welders are in this video. A very light, you know, mid 20 pound range. Uh, it's got a seven foot lead, six foot ground clamp. The ground on this one isn't as quality as the other ones. They're not all high end or anything, but it's held up fine, but they burn up. You can always replace it with another one. Not a big thing. It's a little lighter duty than the rest of them. This machine has a knob for your wire speed, a knob for your voltage, just like any MIG machine would have. Top loading for your two pound spools up here. Every one of these welders has the exact same plastic motor drive, almost the same big gun, things like that. This one does not have a digital display. It's one of the most basic welders in the bunch. And this one sells for the most. We're all talking the $200 range for each welder, so it's not by much, but goes on sale for $169 and off sale, I think it's going for about $214. That's the time I'm making the video. Like I said, no digital display. There's a little cheat sheet inside for getting your knob settings for your amperage. So there's no automatic settings whatsoever on this thing. And it can run 030 and 035 flux wire. I also want to point out that this one does not have a DENS connection for the ground wire. It just comes straight out the front. Not a deal breaker, but it's just hardwired right into it. I've been so happy with this machine. I told my friend about it years ago and we bought one for my work. We have a bigger MIG welder there and a stick welder, but it's one of those things if you have a simple little bracket break off on a shelf or something, you don't want to pack a big welder out there. You can plug this into any 120 volt socket, do a little bit of flux welding fix the bracket and uh, move on. So being super light and portable, it's a great solution. And the one at my works held up just fine, but probably the most basic of the bunch. All right, let's move on to the Yes Welder now. So next up is the Yes Welder Flux 135. It's a 135 amp, 120 volt machine. Uh, this one's actually a little more versatile than the other ones. Not only is it a flux machine, like we were talking about, it also comes with stick lead. So that's pretty cool. It's a stick welder as well. And if you buy an optional TIG torch and have a gas bottle and regulator, it's also a lift TIG machine. So this one rounds out the bunch to be the most versatile multi-process flux welding machine that we're gonna cover here in the video today. The drawback with both of these first machines is they're only 120 volts and you start really pushing the amperage higher in the MIG or stick on this one. You'll probably pop a breaker. Even if you have a dedicated 20 amp breaker, you're gonna push the limits, you're gonna find it. But for eighth inch and around that range and lighter, they're no problem. They'll run off a of breaker, no problem in your house. Decent ground clamp with this one, more sturdy than the titanium. Not high, high end, but nice spring, nice little copper strap in here, decent. This one, as you can see, does have a digital display, which makes setting this thing up really well. It's an auto set machine, so if you're new to welding, it's it's basically calibrated inside. And if you don't like the way it's feeding, because this handles voltage and wire speed, when you turn that knob, it automatically sets it up. You can offset voltage with just this dial, so you can increase or decrease the voltage with that wire speed. Works pretty well. This one will also handle 030 and 035 flux. One thing I don't like about this machine, again, is it is 120 volt only. And if you're running much stick over 80 amps or so, you're gonna probably pop the breaker. It's gonna get frustrating. So 330 seconds rod, I only recommend like 7018 and uh, 6013, 330 seconds rod only for this machine. And don't really exceed 80 amps on the stick because you will be popping your breaker. You can only ask so much out of a simple plug-in but pretty versatile little machine. 
So I do like this machine. I do like that it has a simple little carrying handle on top. Nice access to the wire spool on the side with the door. The auto set is a really nice feature. It's super slick just to dial it up or down. And the fact that you have that amp display on the front is a nice thing. I do wish they made this multi-voltage though. This thing is 120 only. I wish it was 240 as well. It would actually add a little more versatility when it comes to stick welding. This thing is rounded out pretty well. It's got these uh, nice DINs connectors on the front for the stick leads and your ground clamp. Ground is nicer than the titanium. This thing sells for around 179 to 189 in that range. I have a promo code down below that'll save you some money if you end up going through that promo code. It'll save you a little bit of cash and order yourself a welding helmet as well. But all in all, it works pretty good. I've actually done some flux welding on exhaust system on my little mini truck with it. And that worked pretty good. I can't complain about it really, other than it would be nice if it was multi-voltage, but hey, it's a multi-process machine. They gave a lot of features in this for the price, so can't complain too much about it. Uh, I have used this about the least out of all the flux welders. I've had it for about six, seven months. I ran probably a half a spool of wire through it, so I haven't had the crazy amount of welding on it, but it's worked so far when I need it to. So here's the final welder we're gonna cover in this video. It's a Hyanide MIG 140. MIG is a little deceiving because it's a flux welder only. But yes, it's got a very similar MIG lead to other ones. Uh, the gun's about the same. It's on par with the ground clamp like the Yes welder, much better than the original titanium. Nice copper through here. Simple little thing, it's got DINs, connections on the front for the ground. One thing that sets this one apart, even though it's not a multi-process machine like that Yes Welder, it's just a flux welder only like the Titanium, but it's 120 volts and it comes with an adapter and it's, so you can plug it into 240. And this is a 140 amp machine, so you can push it much higher when you plug it into 240 volts. So it's the baby of the bunch when it comes to size, super small, compact side load in here simple little spool access right here works pretty well i've welded quite a bit with this little machine very portable extremely light i do like the way this one welds the most out of all the bunch of the welders here so like i said this is dual voltage so you can take it up to 140 amps on 240 no problem it does fine with that on 120 volts you can't go up as high with amps but this one like the yes welder is auto set which you can dial it down or up, which is really nice. It's got an amp readout right here. And the auto set on this machine, I feel is dialed in the most out of this one compared to the Yes Welder. It just is very precise. Uh, and if you don't like the way it's feeding, for instance, you just push the side button here and you can off, offset your voltage. You can go down up and down tenths of a volt. But I found without fiddling with that, it works just fine. It's just a flux welder like I mentioned before. It's uh, not quite like the Yes welder when it comes to Swiss Army knives, but I do like the dual voltage. This one is the most affordable. It sells for about 154 on Amazon, but this one I've welded quite a bit with and it's buttery smooth. For a flux machine, it kind of changed my mind on uh, these machines. I've always felt they're pretty splattery, kind of smoky, not the best, but uh, with the right wire in these machines, they run really smooth. So we're going to jump over now to loading each one of these welders up with wire, run some uh, welds and some coupons and see how they run. Another thing I want to mention, I actually have a video I did about six months ago about flux wires, trying out different varieties. So I'll put a link below to that video as well. So check it out.
So if you like this content, make a point to uh, hit the notification bell. I post a new video on my channel every other Friday and something's broken on YouTube for the last year or so because they don't seem to notify most of my subscribers that I got new videos out. So if you want to see content like this and other content with mini bikes, mini trucks, or fab building projects, uh, hit that notification bell and stay tuned for more good videos. So here I'm cutting up some 3 16th metal to test these welders at their maximum single pass potential. Later in the video we'll be actually cutting those weld coupons up, doing an acid etch test on them so we can see the full penetration of each one of the welds. It's actually kind of an interesting process, I think you're going to enjoy it. Well, there goes the breaker. Well, because I don't have a 100% dedicated breaker for this welder, I popped my breaker, pushing it almost to full amps. I turned off some lights that were actually drawn on the same breaker to free up a few amps there, and it finished off the weld no problem. So I found in a previous video that this Harper Freight wire doesn't weld as good as some of the other flux wires on the market. So I pulled it out to load up some Forney wire instead. I found this stuff actually works pretty good. So setting up this yes welder is pretty simple. That center button right there sets you between the processes and the wire diameters. So I set it for 030 wire. Dial in your amps and you're ready to start welding. So one thing I got to point out here is I've had countless messages on my videos over the years of people thinking that they're going to hurt their eyes from looking at a video on YouTube. The ultraviolet light does not come through your computer screen or your phone. Yes, if you're in person, you need a welding helmet. But if you're just looking at a YouTube video, no. Okay. <laughs> So now that we got that 14 gauge steel all welded up there, we're going to jump over to some 3 16ths now, crank up the amps to about 120 and start welding. So I'm setting up the high nod to 90 amps just like I did with the Yes Welder. But as soon as I start welding, I could tell 90 was just too hot. It was just too much. It was going to start burning through. So sure enough, it burnt through on that one. So I'm going to crank this thing down to 80 amps to weld this 14 gauge steel. And it definitely worked a lot better at 80 here. So I had to weld that on 80 amps because 90 it just burned right through. So at 90 amps this thing puts out a bit more power than the Yes Welder does. Good little welder, I've been happy with this one.
the breaker. So it's time to cut up all these welded coupons here and do an acid etch test on all of them. I hope you enjoy this part because it took me well over an hour to polish and uh, acid etch all these coupons here. Definitely a lot of different uh, grits and scotch brights to go through. So I did it for you, so enjoy. So here's the titanium on uh, 3 16 uh, with the uh, middle of the road bone stock settings and actually worked really well. I was really happy with the results. And here's the titanium on the 14 gauge. Again, really good penetration there. It's a good, nice, solid joint. The Yes Welder, I was a little less impressed with. Um, it felt a little cooler. The Yes Welder just felt cooler in all the settings than the other two machines. It didn't seem to get, get down to that base of that joint as good. But I mean, it's fine, but I just wasn't as happy with it. And the uh, 14 gauge was completely fine with that. Here's the high nide. Again, this was very on par with the... Uh, the titanium really good penetration got right down into the base of that joint really well and here's the high nide on 14 gauge really blended that in really well on that joint really deep into there and for this lap joint it completely blended it all the way through so good penetration on that one so here's the side-by-side -side comparison of 3 16th metal joints. I'm just making this video so anybody looking to get a flux welder will have a better understanding of these machines and their options so you can make the best decision that fits your needs. Well, I hope you found the video entertaining and uh, beneficial. So all three of these machines work pretty good on the weld tests, and I did a little acid etch test so you could see the penetration on all the welds. Uh, the titanium and the high nide felt like they put out just slightly more hotter, like maybe amps when you're welding. The Yes Welder felt like it was a little low on the amps for all the tests. But all said and done, they all weld just fine. These will handle eighth inch no problem and we did some 3 16 tests on there. Um, I was really happy the way these, all these machines have worked. Like I said, the titanium have the most running time on second the high nide yes well to the least amount on this one you know all these machines are going to handle fixing up a mowing deck if you got some cracks in a mowing deck or welding up a go-kart or mini bike frame you know i used a flux welder years ago about eight years ago to weld up a, a sawmill from scratch and uh, all i had was a lincoln weld pack 100 flux machine and that thing was so cool it was struggling to do eighth inch commonly and these things will burn eighth inch easy definitely these inverter machines all three of these just one run much more efficiently and just a nicer setup i really wish i could have had something like this to put my sawmill together eight years ago but back then all i had was a cheap old um lincoln weld pack that old lincoln was a transformer machine they just don't run as smooth and efficient when these things you start an arc they don't bog kind of like the transformers do before they kind of get back up to amps like these things just hit the ground running with uh, output on them. They work really well. So hope you found this video beneficial. If you did, you know, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. I'll put a bunch of other videos that pertain to uh, starting out and learning fabrication work and welding tips and tricks and stuff like that down below in the description. So check that out. And if you did, consider subscribing. Hopefully, out of all these three, you can figure out which one might fit your needs the best. Super simple budget welders. Get you started. All right. Take care. Till next time. Bye.